Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a very common scenario and that involves parsing email bodies through the use of Power Automate expressions. Let's go. So you might be thinking to yourself, this seems like a really simple problem. Why go about and, and record this? And it is a pretty simple problem until you start considering the edge cases. So if you want to just go ahead and use the contains expression, you can go ahead and figure out if a specific word exists inside of the body of an email. But what happens when you've got embedded words? So let's take the, for example, let's take the word hat. Hat can be nested inside of many other words like chat and that or Thatcher. And those would be scenarios where you wouldn't want to process that email because that's not talking about a hat that you wear on your head. Another thing that you need to think about as well is the case. When you go ahead and use contains, um, it's going to be case sensitive based upon the sample that you're providing or how you're testing that specific expression. So hat could have a capital H, could be a lowercase h, could be all caps. And you want to treat those all the same. So how can we go about addressing that scenario as well? But the good news is using expressions, we have this ability to go ahead and address those use cases. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure Serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless360 at serverless360.com. All right, so just to put things in perspective, this would be a scenario where we receive an email we want that email to flow through to our customer service rep when they are looking for the existence of the word hat. But what we wouldn't want to have happen is if they provide chat, that wouldn't be an email that we'd want to pass forward. So with that out of the way, let's just go ahead, let's just see this in action and see a demo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through the demo first, and then what I will do is then go through piece by piece and show you exactly how it was built. Okay, so now we are going to go through the demo and where we're going to start is in email. And so I do have a bit of a confession as I was recording this, I thought of an edge case. And so I had to re-record this bit to, uh, to account for that edge case. So there's really three use cases we're going to focus on here. One is uh, number one case, right? So if we have like lowercase letters, how do we go ahead and pick up if hat is there? The other one is going to be where it's embedded in another word. And so that would be where we have something like that, which contains the word hat. And then the third use case, which use case, which was the one that I stumbled on, was when we start with the word hat, but then we could have subsequent letters. And so an example of that is the word hate. And so we're going to address that use case as well. So let's go ahead step by step. So the first use case is around the word hat itself. So let's go ahead and let's send that off. And here we can see we've got the word hat. And so let's click on send. Now the next use case is going to be the one that embeds the word hat. So in this case, we've got the word that in our email. And so we want to be able to account for this use case as well. So let's go ahead, let's click send. And then the third one is that edge case that I was talking about where it starts with the word hat, but then we have additional letters after the fact. In this case, it's an E because we have the word hate. So this is something where we wouldn't want to go ahead and process that particular email. So let's go ahead, let's click on send. Now here, let's go just into the the editing experience and then we'll go through the run history for each of these. First thing that we're gonna do is we have an email trigger. I've included a subject filter of order and this is just so that I'm not pulling on all of these emails in from my inbox, which naturally isn't, uh, isn't useful. 
I've got a couple optional steps I would call. It kind of depends on preference. I don't think it alters the behavior of the expression itself. But naturally when you have emails, you typically have them being drafted in HTML. And so you have all of this additional HTML format that just actually doesn't provide you a lot of value when it comes to parsing. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the body of our email, which is gonna be in HTML, convert it to text. This, I've got a compose statement, which I'm just taking the output of that HTML to text action. And just so I can clearly see what is the email that is being processed and just help with the debugging purposes and also sh sharing this with you folks. Now here is the meat of the content here, right? So we've talked about case and we want to make sure that we're doing this comparison of apples to apples and not have to worry about, well, is it starting with a capital letter? Is it all caps? Is it low, lower case? So what we can do is just use this two upper expression and we'll find that over here in the expressions itself, two upper and then we're gonna include the body that is coming from our email itself right here. And that will take the whole message body and convert it to uppercase for the purpose of this expression. It will not alter the message body in downstream actions. That is just um, basically an expression that we're using at runtime to do that comparison. Now the next bit is we're gonna go ahead and see if that message body contains, and notice how I've then converted this to all uppercase so that we can basically compare apples to apples. Now this is where it's very important. We need to include a space before hat and we need to include a space after hat. And so the scenarios here is that we want to ensure when we have a, a word like that, that we don't pick this up and we won't pick it up because we're looking for a space before we get into the rest of the word, which is hat. Now on that last edge case, we have the word hate. And so here, what we're doing is enforcing the fact that we want no letters to follow the T and that we can just include this space and then what we will not do is pick up the word hate. Now what I've got is just some notifications, really just for debug purposes, so that we can see what was the result of our condition. And when we have just the word hat, does it show up here and we get a push notification? And then when we have more than the word hat or the word hat just doesn't exist. So this would be the scenario of that or hate or just in general something, you know, an email that doesn't contain the three letters H-A-T consecutively at all. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at our run history and see exactly how each of these emails were parsed. So this was the first one, this is our happy path. And what we can see is I would like to return my recent hat purchase. So the expectation here is that we should head down the left path and process this email because it contains the word hat. So that's great, that's exactly how we want it to work. Let's look at our second email. And here let's take a look at compose. I'm still waiting on my shoe order. I would have thought that, okay, it would be here by now. Now, so in this case, we don't want it to go down the left path, we want it to go down the right path. And because it doesn't contain the word hat. So that's great, so far so good. Let's see our third use case, or this is really that edge case. And here we have, I hate my new t-shirt order. Great, okay. And so we don't want it to go down the left path, we do want it to go down the right path because we don't have the word hat. And so that's great, that uh, addresses all of our three different use cases. And that really concludes the demo. So I hope this provides some value. I think you can use these expressions in, in more scenarios than just email. But this was a question that was recently asked to me. So I thought I would share it with the rest of you. So that concludes today's episode. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you next week and thanks for all your support. Take care.